So I'd like to do some problems with real number exponents for you. Um, hopefully you remember how to work with exponents. Uh, just a brief uh, reminder, if you have 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 4th, what do you do? You add exponents, right? 2 to the 3 plus 4, 2 to the 7th. And then you can figure that out using your calculator. So, when you have numbers multiplied by each other, as long as the bases are the same, you can add the exponents. So, what if I decide to give you 2 to the 3rd times 3 to the 4th? Could you do that one? Well, you could do this part as 2 to the 3rd. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. You could do this one, 3 to the 4th, which is some bigger number and then multiply those two answers. So what's important is if you use the process of adding exponents, the bases must be the same. So keep that in mind. When I do this problem, are the bases the same? Sure they are. So my answer is to add the exponents. 4 plus 1. Well, I'm going to write this first. 4 minus root 5 plus 1 plus root 5 showing addition of exponents. Now, if I do the real addition here, 4 plus 1 is 5, root 5 and minus root 5 and plus root 5 is 0, so 2 to the 5th, and hopefully you know 2 to the 5th is 32. So that one you can do. What about this one? 2 to the 4 minus root 5 times 3 to the 1 plus root 5. Can you do that by adding exponents? No. Why not? Bases are not the same. So it's important to watch for bases and make sure they're the same. Now, <clears throat> another type of problem you're going to have to do on this assignment is an expression that's called a power raised to a power. Now, do you remember the rule for that? For example, if I had 2 to the 3rd raised to the 2nd power, what is that? Do you remember? Power to a power you multiply. So that's 2 to the 6th, which is 64. Another way to think of that, if I wanted to do it with adding exponents, I could have said it's 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 3rd, right? Take it twice and then add exponents. 3 plus 3 is 6, 2 to the 6th. I still get 64. So there's two ways to look at that one. Okay, so here we go. Tricky one. Power to a power. What do I do? Do I add these or do I multiply? Power to a power. Multiply the exponents. So what's 2 root 3 times root 3? 2 root 9. 2 times 3. Ooh, 6. So I have 5 to the 6th power. Right? And... Then I can use my calculator and I can get 15,625. So you can get an answer for that one. Um, if you have a nice exponent, I do want you to get an answer. If the exponent has a radical in it, then you can leave it in exponent form. All right, I've got some more examples here. This one, let's take the one in the middle first. 3 to the 5th over 3 squared. You could rewrite that as 3 to the 5 minus 2. Remember division. First, are the bases the same? Yep. Division means you subtract. So that would be 3 to the 3rd, right, which equals 27. So that one's pretty easy. What about this one? Same process. Subtract the exponents. I'm going to rewrite it as the base of 3. Make sure, remember the bases have to be the same. So I'm going to do 2 plus root 7 minus the quantity 2 minus root 7. Now it's important to remember to minus the whole quantity. This becomes 3 to the 2 plus root 7 minus 2 plus root 7. So what happens? I get 3 to the 2 root 7. And that is the final answer, 3 to the 2 root 7. All right? Now, some people might 
want to say that that is 3 squared to the root 7 and call it 9 to the root 7. That would also be acceptable. But I'll take it at this. Now, <clears throat> look over here. Can I add my exponents in this one? Trick question, though. All right. 4 to the pi and 2 to the 3 minus pi. Hmm. I could rewrite that. 2 squared to the pi times 2 to the 3 minus pi. Hey, 2 to the 2 pi times 2 to the 3 minus pi. Now what's the rule? Bases are the same. Do I add exponents or multiply them? You add them. So 2 pi plus 3 minus pi. So I get 2 to the pi plus 3. And I'm about done when I get there. So now let's try solving some equations working with real number exponents. Now if you can get bases to be the same, you're good. And if you can rewrite numbers to smaller numbers to exponents, you want to do that. So this 4 I could write as 2 squared. This 1 over 2 to the 1 I could write as 2 to the negative 1. So my first step, I'm going to write 2 squared to the 2x. Remember, show your work equals, and I'm going to move that 2 up and call it 2 to the negative 1 to the 1 minus 2x. No tricks here, just using exponents properly. All right, this side, 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the minus 1 plus 2x. You follow what I did there, right? No tricks, exponent rule, power to a power, multiply. Now, here's the cool part about this problem. If 2 to the 4x equals 2 to the negative 1 plus 2x, that means that these exponents must equal each other. So set them equal and solve for x. 4x equals minus 1 plus 2x. Ooh, this is getting easy. 2x, 2x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 half. There you go. Put a negative one half here, negative one half here, and check, and both sides will come out the same. I do recommend when you get an answer, put it in and check. All right, let's do this one. Any thoughts? I hope you're noticing that 25 could be rewritten. So 5 to the 3x, we'll leave alone, equals 1 over 5 squared to the x minus 1. Hmm, I wish that wasn't a fraction. You know what to do? 5 to the 3x equals 5 to the negative 2 to the x minus 1. One step at a time here. Power to a power. You know what to do? Sure you do. Power to a power. Multiply. So, 5 to the negative 2x plus 2. Well, there we go. If this side is indeed equal to this side, like that equal sign says, both sides are equal, then the exponents must be equal. 3x must equal negative 2x plus 2. Add 2. So 5x equals 2. Oh boy. x equals 2 fifths. Now, again, you can put your exponents in and check each side with your calculator to see if it works, but it does. Now, important thing. When I'm doing this setting the exponents equal, you notice both bases are the same. If they're not the same, you can't use this method, so be careful and pay attention to detail. Good luck!